Hi, everybody. This is Rizwan Chaudhry, and you are listening to the Feel Finish podcast, sponsored by Abijek, the show that shares expertise on all aspects of injectables, vaccines, and aseptic fill finish. Season one is offering 10 episodes focused on topics including facility design, regulatory, quality, supply chain management, and AR, VR, to name just a few. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Parish Gallagher, an independent bioprocess consultant. And we are going to be talking about the current state and trends impacting fill finish from formulation through to commercialization. So Parish, first of all, it's lovely to meet you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Well, Parish, before we start talking about the impact of fill finish on the trends, would you mind giving the listeners a quick overview of your role and your business? So uh, I've been in bioprocessing for over 40 years in four different drug companies. I helped bring two drugs to market, built a number of stainless steel facilities and single-use facilities. And I started my own company 20 years ago in single-use manufacturing and sold that to GE Healthcare a couple of years ago. Right now, I'm an independent bioprocess consultant. Fantastic. So my first question for you is, what are the different types of fill finish technologies available right now? So there are a number of them. The traditional fill finish technology is an open vial process where vials are filled in in the open uh, in a class 100 clean room suite with operators standing in that suite servicing the, the production line as it operates. Another approach is to put all of that production line in an isolator and use robotic machines to do the filling and the maintenance and the stoppering and capping of the vials after they are filled. Uh, so those are the two main filling approaches today. Right. And, and what are the capital costs of those different technologies? Is it very different? Yeah, it is very different. The open vial filling is the highest capital cost process because of the expense of the clean room facility and the operational expense to maintain that clean air. And the, the machinery that does the filling and, and the processing of the conveyors and, and uh, processing the vials is very capital intensive. By comparison, the robotic approach of a closed a clean room with robots is quite a bit less expensive, and it does not require being placed in a very clean space. So that reduces the capital cost of the facility in which it sits. Right. So what are the main strengths and weaknesses of the different technologies? So the open filling technology's weaknesses are that the vial is exposed to the environment. So that can jeopardize the quality of the product if it's infected with a dust particle containing bacteria or fungi. That's the main objection against open vial filling. The other weakness, of course, is the validation is is very expensive uh, on top of the capital cost because you've got to validate a very clean environment and demonstrate that it does not contaminate the vials that are being processed. Right. And what are the strengths for it, though? Well, the strengths are that you can do very large-scale fills with uh, open vial filling. So open vial filling facilities can do tens of thousands to 100,000 vials a day uh, because of the high-throughput machinery. And that, that of course, is uh, very good for reducing cost of goods and supplying big markets. And with regards to the robotic use of uh, technology, uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses to that? So the weaknesses are, it's not as large scale. So the robots cannot work as quickly as you can operate an open vial filling line. The robots move methodically within the chamber and do the vial placements and the vial filling and the vial stoppering and capping. So those machines are limited in their speed. The other weakness, of course, is that you need to clean and place the entire chamber. So that's an expensive, time-consuming step. The strengths of the closed chambers approach is that you have a much cleaner environment because there are no humans standing in the environment. And so the chances of contaminating a vial are uh, nearly eliminated. And that, of course, increases the assurance of safety in doing the filling process. Now, you touched on it a little bit earlier in your previous answer, but how do the cost of goods compare across the different technologies? Well, the cost of goods are lowest for open vial filling because you can do such large fills. So you're amortizing all of the overhead costs over many more vials of drug. 
despite the fact that you have a high capital cost, which of course turns into a high depreciation cost. So usually open valve filling has a lower operational cost compared to uh, closed chamber filling, which is a smaller system, has fewer vials per fill. Therefore, the overhead costs are amortized over fewer vials, which drives up the cost per vial. And now let's talk about validation. How do the validation burdens compare across the different technologies? So the validation of the open vial filling focuses on the validation of the clean air system that's maintaining the environment over the production line, since that's critical to ensuring that the vials do not get contaminated. So that validation has to be done in both static and dynamic conditions to demonstrate the robustness of the HVAC filtration system in the production room. The validation of the closed chamber system includes uh, environmental monitoring to show that the clean in place and sterilization in place of the chamber itself is effective and thorough and will ensure a clean environment for the filling operation of the vials. So the focus there is on cleaning and, and sterilization validation compared to the open vial filling line. So in terms of the facilities themselves, though, what are the actual differences in regards to the facilities across the different technologies? So in the open filling line process, the facility is dominated by HVAC systems to provide all of the clean air, sure. providing class 100 air over a large area. And you're, you're fighting the contamination brought in by humans into that space. So the facility uh, systems and utility systems in an open filling vial facility are more extensive and more uh, expensive uh, as a result and cost more to maintain. The facility in the closed chamber process is much simpler and it does not have to be any cleaner than class D because the chamber itself is operating at a class one level of purity. So that reduces the capital cost very significantly. And it allows you to put a second or third or fifth or 10th chamber in that same facility. And that way you can amortize the cost of operations over many more filling chambers. That reduces the capital cost of the facility amortized over many more filling operations. So Parish, that's fantastic. So what do you see as the future for Fill Finish? Well, the really exciting future is the ability to fill the vial when it's closed. So in other words, the vials are already stoppered and they're sterilized and they're filled by injecting the drug through the stopper and backfilling the vial and then withdrawing the needle and sealing the hole in the stopper. And this has been commercialized by a company called Aseptic Technologies. Right. They're located in Belgium. Another company that's taken that technology to the next step is Intact Technologies. They're located in Connecticut. And with regard to them, the FDA has reviewed their technology and has supported it very strongly. They also believe it's the future of vial filling. So they've licensed them to do vial filling and also to do compounding of solutions in bags using this same stopper that's pierced by the filling needle and backfilled. So that future looks very strong and very interesting. And of course, by having a closed stopper, you've relieved a lot of the validation around maintaining clean air over the open vial uh, process. So there's a great savings there. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for talking to me today, Parish. Now, if you want to know more about what you do and your solutions, how can they get hold of you? My email address is xlrxone at aol.com. Brilliant. There you go, listeners. If you'd like to know more, then you can get in touch with Parish using that email address. And if you'd like to listen to more podcasts around Phil Finish and related topics, then please check out the Phil Finish podcast website, which is www.philfinishpodcast.com, where you can hear other podcasts as well as put down any topics that you'd like to hear more about as well. And hopefully you can see that in future editions of the series. So all that's left me to say is thank you, Parish, for your time today. Thank you, listeners. It's been great to have you here. And until next time, goodbye. And now a brief word from this episode's sponsor. Appyject is helping companies fill finish their injectable medicines and vaccines in scalable pre-filled delivery devices using blow, fill, seal, aseptic technology. 
To learn more or explore how Appyject can help your company solve its injectable drug delivery challenges, visit www.appyject.com. Copyright Appyject. All rights reserved. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in the podcast belong solely to the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views, thoughts, and opinions of the host, sponsor, speaker's employer, or any other organization or individual mentioned.